Hi there, I'm Elga Valovirta. Thanks for tuning in. This video is about the guitars, the amps and the gear I used to record my latest solo album, Shooting from the Hip, which is out now. This video has been asked by you, dear subscribers, YouTube watchers or whatever, wherever you're watching this, and some magazines, websites and so on. They would like to interview me and we kind of agreed with a few of them that probably it's the easiest and <laughs> the best solution if I just do a video and then, you know, they can share it and stuff. So, let's start. The main guitar, I guess you could say, is this uh, ESP Signature series. So this was the first kind of my, my Signature series guitars that ESP built for me. Because I've been an indoor C almost 20 years, 15, 20 years, since the early 2000s. And I want to especially thank Kai Saarikko from Musa Maailma and my A&R guy at ESP, Tony Rosser, for your amazing support through during all these years. So back in the day when Musa Maailma started to distribute ESP in Finland, Kai was actually the guy who got to me and a couple of my friends, Alexi from Budom, bless him, Esa from Amorphis, Empu from Nightwish, uh, Mokoma guys, Stamina guys, Kai got us the endorsement deals. And some of us, like Alexi, you know, his signature models are really famous. You know, many people bought them, they come in different versions. Esa had his signature limited run, like 12 guitars worldwide or something. And there was discussion to do this also. But I can't actually remember why that never happened. But anyway, if you're interested to have these exact, exact same guitars, ESP Japan Custom Shop has the specs. And, and you can contact them via Musa Maailma. I put the link in the description below, so if you're interested. So, how this differs from your standard Eclipse? Well, four knobs, this horn, it's, a, it's different. This is kind of a standard. The thickness, this is a lot thicker than your basic ESPs. The body, it's a full thickness, but this weights, I don't know, four, five, four kilos, something almost. The neck is thicker. <laughs> Everything is thicker and bigger because I'm a big guy. And, well, shaved neck, maple neck, Mah uh, mahogany body maple top. EMG 81, 85 pickups. Sometimes I ha I've had 57, 66 on this, but you can purchase this if you want. So this is, usually I have this guitar on standard D slash drop C. And this is the guitar I used on those songs that were in that tuning on the album. It's, it's a great guitar. I have four of these. This one I used Exact same guitar. It's a you know custom shop. Same specs, exact same. It's a bit different. This is this one is even a bit heavier because these are handmade, so they're all a little bit different, even though they are made by my specs. But obviously, when a guy handmade makes these, they are a bit different. Like this is a little bit different than this curve on. Uh, small details, but basically the same. So this one I used actually only on a song for an absent friend, which I wrote for Alex and my grandpa. Because that song had a has a standard C tuning. So this was the guitar I used on. That on the, on the leads. On the cleans and rhythms, I used this. This is like a standard Eclipse. You know, it's a lot thinner, the neck is thinner, I believe this is only mahogany body, mahogany neck, not maple neck, not maple top. So this sounds a bit darker. Evertune Bridge. I wanted to have one guitar with Evertune Bridge because this is really easy, especially I like this. When it, there's low tunings, you play rhythm. So everything is 
really well intonated and in tune. EMG8185. I think originally this guitar comes with Seymour Duncan passive pickups, but I, I, I've been using EMG8185 since 90s. <laughs> the story is that I went to Musa Maailma, I've been working with them so long, and I had this old Epiphone copy of Les Paul. And the pickups were like feedbacking and screeching and they weren't punchy enough. And I said like, you know, I would like to have something more powerful and silent. And then they said, well, we have this MG85 thing. Zach Wilde uses those two. Thank you. <laughs> so I bought them and I haven't found need to change that. <laughs> and this guitar, this is in standard tuning. This is the these, these custom shops are made by these guitar specs. The thickness, the neck thickness, it's basically this. Except this has mahogany neck, those have maple neck. Why? Well, maple sounds a bit harder, brighter, but what I found during the years of touring all over the world, these mahogany necks, because I like them to have, you know, no lacquer, no nothing, it's just pure wood, like a baseball bat or ho hockey stick. Mahogany is a little bit softer wood, so this is more sensitive to climate changes. So the neck kind of like it goes can go from another direction to another direction. So that's also the reason I don't have any these plates on any, and I always have a truss rod on my pedal board or, or, or back pocket so I can adjust. Maple necks, they keep their when you set them to something, it's thicker wood, it, it holds better. So that was the, basically the the reason. I like both, but yeah, maple. So this is the guitar. This has been taped, signed by Zach Wild. Zach Wild actually played with this guitar when, when he was in Finland. I mean, not live, but you know, we jammed a little bit together. So this is, uh, is great. And then this, another Tokai. And yet I have no idea about these models, what they are. They're just made in Japan. It's just here, made in Japan. I Don't ask me. <laughs> 5766. I've had 85, 81s on this one also, but since EMGs are so easy to change, there's no soldering, I switch back and forth. I like these pickups a lot, lot too, because these are kind of like PAF style windage, like and active EMGs together. Kind of like best of both worlds. A little bit more lower mids and more passive windage like, but still the aggression of a active pickup. Other than that, it's basically the same same guitar. Okay, then what I used, this is my latest I got from ESP. Thank you, Tony. Uh, they sent this to me last year. Basic LTD. I haven't done anything except I, I shaved the, the lacquer off. Totally stuck. Fantastic guitar. I used this on also on songs that are in standard tuning. The pickups are, I think this is a Seymour Duncan Custom. I really like this pickup. It's fantastic. And this is a Fat Cat, which is like a P90, a single coil. You can also, you know, make this to single coil and... Great guitar. It's, it's, it feels and sounds like it's a lot more expensive. But it's like made in, made in Korea. Awesome. Okay, then what I used is my... Tokai Tele, I use this on, on the clean guitars, on the song Bog Renews, and then the Three Leg Chick and the Chicken Picking song, I use this. So this is a Tokai body, Seymour Duncan Antique series, Antique, whatever, single coils, and the neck is Warmoth neck. The Tokai neck was okay, great, but it had 21 frets. I'm confused if the guitar doesn't have 22 frets. So, Musa Mama ordered a neck neck to me from Warmoth. And this is kind of like V-shaped neck, so it's round here, then it goes more like V. So I really like this with, with this guitar. The, the tuners are shallower, I guess, yeah. So 22 frets, jumbo frets, and yeah, so this is kind of, it says Toka, this is kind of like hybrid between Toka and Warmoth. And then, well, these seven strings I didn't use. These are, you know, custom shops to... I use these mainly on Suburban Tribe, but not on this album. Bass. 
old Tokai bass, which isn't actually mine. This is a uh, my bandmate from Suburban Tribe, legendary Finnish bass player and vocalist Janne Joutseniemi, you also may know him from the band Stone. This is actually his bass. Or when we call it quits in 2011 with Suburban Tribe, this bass was, bass was left to me. So this I've been using many years. And I'm actually waiting for uh, uh, Tony sent me an email, ESP, that uh, he sent me a Phoenix bass like this, because I really like this guitar. So. Hopefully I will have that bass soon. But the Tokai bass is great. I, I, I don't know if there's any... I have no idea about the pickups or whatever. But it's, you know, basic bass. <laughs> then what I used... I used this EVH Frankie. This is in E-flat. So I used this on a couple of leads. Just the, the, the whammy, whammy bar thing. You, you will hear it if you listen to the album. If, if there's whammy bar things, it's, it's this or this guitar. This is also a, a custom shop. And uh, this is... Well, I've done videos about this guitar. It's a special. This is like totally one of a kind. Les Paul Profile Neck, 22 frets, short scale. The wings, they are not exactly Gibson, but they are not exactly ESP or anything. So this is really unique. And I'm very thankful that I, ESP made this for me, because first they were like, well, can't you just have the, the you know, Dave Mustaine type V or Alex Eli? I was no, I want Gibson style V. And then they just made it a little bit different so that, you know, nobody could say anything that you I've been copying anything all day. Great guitar. And this goes like up and down, because that goes only down, so... I use this on those, those leads. Those were the guitars I used. And now let's go to here and I will tell and show the amps I used. All right, the amps. Main amp was the bad boy. Marshall JZM 89203 I bought over 20 years ago, and if I remember correct, in euros, because it was finished marks back then, so it was the late 90s, or I don't like to remember. Anyway, I paid about 300 euros of this. <laughs> They're quite much worth nowadays. My first tube amp ever was JZM 89203. Not this. This one, because I went through a phase where I tried a few different amps, and then went back to this, because it's that's like coming home. So that was the majority. All, all, all rhythm guitars, most of the solos, it's this one. Either boosted with a bus SD1. This is my first, my second pedal ever. I bought this in early 90s. <laughs> you can see there's no Hope you can see. There's no screws. It's taped together. This is actually... I think this is paint, or then this could be blood. It probably is paint. It's, it's been through thick and thin. <laughs> it's, so, many times, I, especially on solos, I, I use this. But on some songs like the Pasadena 78, Young Forever, it was just guitar straight into Marshall. Nothing in between. So, yeah. SD1 and Marshall, you know, hard to beat. 987X Plexi, 50 watt reissue Plexi. This one I used on, on some leads, like a song for an absent friend. All leads are with this. The, the mellower leads are like a bit tamed. Well, I don't know if Plexi can be ever tamed. And the main leads, I basically did this. You know, everything on 10. That's it. So, yeah. And what else I use? The 800-223 Zach Wild. This and this from 85. I, I bought these two almost at the same time. Uh, you know, over 20 years ago. This has EL34s. This, this had EL34s, but for the last couple of years, I, this has had 6550s. This is also really aggressive. I used these two on, on many of those harmonized leads and melodies, just to get a different 
texture because you know the same amps 2 dual 3 but they all sound different this is the most aggressive this is probably the most the biggest low end this is the it's really close to this the only difference is the power amp tubes but this is as aggressive but the the power amp since this has EL34 it's a little bit different flavor so these three these four amps especially this one was on 90% Everything else was adding colors, and this one I used to know a few leads. And then 5150, I think I used this on one song, on one part, where I kind of just double tracked one riff. I wanted to have that, you know, beefy thing there. It, it, it's a. Uh, this box is too small. Yeah, the chorus, it is, it is 5150 and the, the bad boy together. You hear when I listen, it's a, it's a bit different sound, just on the chorus. And then this 2000. TSL, for some reason, quite underrated amp, but I love this, especially this clean channel. So this one I used, there's a couple of clean parts on a couple of songs. I, I used this and then the good old Boss Chorus Ensemble. This is also <laughs> through thick and thin. I, I bought this also in the 90s. <laughs> you know, if it ain't broken, why fix it? And the other gear, I didn't use my cabinet because, you know, I these two bands need to be cranked. I have a mics here, I could mic this, but it would be insanely loud, I couldn't hear any, anything else. So I, I used a reactive load and impulse response. So what I have now is a Sand Rock React IR, but on the album I actually used a, a Sir reactive load IR, which I still have, it's somewhere there. And Jens Bulgren impulse response. It's much more easier. I, I get the exactly the same results when I, than you know if I would use a cabinet and mic it with different mics and you know check how it sounds and blah blah blah. But Jens made me a signature IR, Valo Virtuos, you know after, after my specs what I requested and that was the the IR I used the most on distorted guitars. Then on on some occasions I doubled. I, I used the Sound of God 2 and a, a greasy beard. And on the clean guitars, I used almost ACC and Telecast Me IRs. I put a link in there. I have an affiliate link. You you can get a discount if you if you wanna wanna buy those fantastic mix ready mix ready IRs. But again, 90% it was the bad boy into Sir Reactive Load and Volver chose IR. And if I wanted a little bit more, I boosted it with Super Overdrive. Those were the amps. Okay, then the pedals. Well, the chorus and super overdrive I already showed. The wah I used was this <laughs> beaten old Jimi Hendrix wah. Again, from the 90s. <laughs> so I used this. Then I also used this full tone Clyde Deluxe, which is all also pretty beaten. This I, I bought, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. So this has three modes, Wacket, Jimmy and Shaft. The Shaft is kind of like the standard, Jimmy is almost like the Jimi Hendrix wah, not quite. And the Wacket is really deep wah. So if I wanted deeper wah, I, I used this one, this Wacket, which is my, my favorite position. And it has also a input level, kind of like a boost. So you can really drive the, the, the wah, great wah. Then on one solo, I used Phase 90. I guess you hear that song and solo when you listen to the album. That was on one song and then this compressor, Ego, Vampler's Ego compressor, hopefully you can see it. Will it focus? Maybe. I used this on a three-leg chicken with a Telecaster. So it was Telecaster, this into Plexi. That's, that's punky, you know, tuck, 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 plucky sound. So it was just to even it, even it out a little bit. It's, it's a nice trick for you know, get the punch for those chicken picking licks. That was the gear. <laughs> so not much, 90% guitar with humbucking pickups, Marshall JZM 800, with and without bus SD1, couple of interreactive load and couple of impulse responses. And I didn't do pretty much any, I didn't do much in a mixing, because my philosophy is that when you record good sound, play a good sound, you don't basically need to just make sure that the levels are okay in the mix. 
occasionally you need to do something. But if, if I need to do a lot, then I'm like, okay, well, the sound is probably not good in the first place. Let me just try something else. Very few pedals and all the delays and reverbs, occasional SPX90 symphonic effect, especially on, on the clean guitars, I did them when I mixed the album. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you, you found this interesting. And please check out the, the couple of websites, darkstars.di, Musa Maailma, ESB Guitars, my, my solo album and Syrah and stuff. I'll put links in the description if you wanna, you know, you know read, read some more. Okay, whatever. Hey, thanks for watching. Take care. All the best, my friends. See ya.